Hi guys, I hope this um, is recording all right. Um, this is our, the second PowerPoint on I Daniel Blake, and we're going to be looking at um, distribution and marketing this week. Actually, um, I'm going to add a couple of extra things in there and do technology and regulation as well. Then everything is kind of covered for I Daniel Blake. <coughs> so, did you watch I Daniel Blake last week? Uh, what did you think of it? Um, did you think it was more educational than it was entertaining? Maybe a bit of both. Did you see notice the regional accent that they had in it? Did you notice the low budget aesthetic? There's no real stars. No, real, it, it's all set in real locations, etc. Um, do you sense the political ideologies within the film? It's a very political film, so I think you probably would have. Um, did you see that it's not really a mainstream film? The ending, I think, you'll, will give you that that impression. It's um, a very sad ending. It doesn't doesn't end like a normal mainstream blockbuster. So in this PowerPoint, we'll be discussing, I think I've said this already, distribution and marketing, but also technology and regulation as well. I've got to say that. So distribution, um, the production and distribution costs of this film were very, very low, and it was mainly distributed in the UK and not so much outside. Um, where it was distributed outside the UK, it, was, um, it did better in countries where it was either dubbed or it had subtitles. So in America, it didn't do very well because they don't like the accents. Um, they had that problem when they released Train Spotting as well. If you've seen the film Train Spotting, that didn't do very well in America because of the accents. <coughs> it was actually only shown in America once at a film festival. Maybe if you watch the film, um, you'll see how the production styles and the narrative and the themes limit it to a bit of an, uh, mainly an audience inside England. Or an English audience would be the way to say that properly, Alex. Uh, marketing techniques. You need to research a load of different marketing techniques. Um, how they marketed I don't know Blake. Um, you should try and save your findings, make sure you read through articles and things. You'll definitely need to refer to this in detail in the exam. You'll know that from the mocks. Uh, they really like details and mem memorise facts. Um, so here are a, f a few things that I've researched um, to get you started, but you might want to look into these yourselves. So do you remember last week, from last week's PowerPoint, who the distributors were? I'll give you a second to see if you can remember it. It was, three, two, one, boom, Eon Productions. <coughs> so Eon distributed them, they're responsible for the marketing. Um, they, had, they had a very small marketing and budget for this film, but um, you know they did some interesting things and we're going to go through what they did. So first of all, they use a lot of traditional methods of advertising. Have a think, if you were going to be advertising a film and you are going to be using traditional methods, what might they be? So what were the kind of traditional ways films used to be advertised? I think you're probably can guess some of these, but these might include posters, trailers, magazine articles, newspaper articles. Yeah, that's the main areas they focused on, and that's some of the stuff we're going to be looking at today. So why do you think they use that more traditional sort of marketing? Well, it's because the target audience, they were going for people who were over 45. So an older target audience are going to be more attracted through the more traditional means of marketing. Here's some of the posters. Um, we can have a look at these individually and give them a little bit of an analysis. If we look at the first one there, we've got the, the working class sort of uniform he's wearing. Of the, it's uh, the, the woolly hat and the kind of coat signifies the working class. The, hat, the pose, the hand up in the air. Um, we're going to look at that sort of hand up in the air pose in a little while. Um, you've got the graffiti that repeats on quite a few of the posters. Also, it's got at the top of the poster uh, a director by Ken Loach, so he's being used. The auteur theory there, he's being used as a signifier to sell the film. We've also got a load of quotes from reviews, four star, five star reviews. Moving on to the second one, we've got um, a Ken Loach film at the top of it. The I Don't Know Blake appeal and change um, in sort of graffiti. And the painting sort of effect of I Don't Know Blake sort of makes him look maybe like a sort of political figure. Moving on to the next one, you've got at the top, it says Palm Door, winner of the Palm Door Award. That's the Cannes Film Festival Award. The picture is very similar to some of the other films um, that Ken Loach has made, some of the other pictures and advertising for those films. So things like Kathy Come Home, if, if you remember from last week's presentation, I showed you some examples of Ken Loach's other films, and they were kind of very similar. Uh, the next picture, we've got the, um, the same uniform, the same pose up in the air, but it, here they're boasting the, uh, the BAFTA nominations they've got. So they've got, a, they've got five um, BAFTA nominations there, including Best Film, uh, most outstanding film, hang on, 
Most Outstanding Film, Best Film and Outstanding British Film, okay. And then British Director, British Screenplay and British Supporting Actress. Finally, we have another painted picture at the top there uh, of Daniel Blake staring off into the distance. Uh, kind of, again, maybe sort of evokes the feeling of sort of political paintings, possibly. Political paintings, possibly. Hmm. Right, we'll move on. I'll show you some stuff, um, sort of intertextual and cultural signifiers. Here they are. Intertextuality and cultural signifiers. So we've got John Lennon there, Power to the People. He was a, um, he was a Beatle. He was a great, great songwriter. Um, and he did a lot of protest songs, so like Power to the People, Power to the People, right on. That's the album cover for it there. The, the fist signifies sort of Power to the People. It's used as a sort of um, protest, sign of protest. We see it again there, All Power to the People. You've got a picture of Che Guevara there and a picture of Obama. Those sort of political images, um, those, those sort of painted images, are sort of reminiscent maybe a little bit of the I Daniel Blake posters, possibly. Possibly. What do you think? Maybe? So next, um, here we have the uh, the Daily Mirror article. If you can actually, if you look, it's um, it was a few different newspapers that were all from Reach TLC. So you remember that from the newspaper stuff we studied and from the mock exam. Um, but they all had articles in them that were allegedly well, that were supposed to be written by the character of Daniel Blake. Look at how the Daily Mirror has replaced the eye with a, a kind of graffiti eye, and then you've got the all of the different papers have the same banner. Um, Iden or Blake need your attention. Look inside for my column. On the right-hand side, you've got the article there. Um, you can see the graffiti at the top and the bottom of the page, the style. Um, the kind of the hand in the air kind of image, sort of repeated twice at the bottom of the page. And then in the screenshot, you've got the police arresting him, um, which obviously conveys sort of a, a theme of the film. And then he's in a pose. I think he's actually waving, but it does look similar to that hand in the air pose. And then the headline, the system failed me, it could fail you too. The Guardian also gave it a five-star review there. Um, so both The Guardian and The Mirror are really the only uh, newspapers that are left-wing. Uh, that is a very poor quality. That's not 4K, is it? That's very poor. Um, but yeah, they were the only, they're the only real left-wing papers, and they both supported the film quite well. Um, the big issue is a magazine and it's very left-wing obviously it's a help the homeless magazine we'll be studying that in the second year um, and it's featured a lot about Daniel Blake as well so has this film just changed the government's mind well spoiler no it didn't they carried on with their terrible actions um, so there we go if you pay for this magazine take it so I'm just reading the front of that I'll be on um, I Don't Blake won the Palm d'Or Award at the Cannes Film Festival. Now, the Cannes Film Festival is a French sort of alternative film festival, uh, slightly more artistic than the Oscars, uh, similar in a way to the BAFTAs here. There's a picture of Ken Loach wing it, winning the award. He's saying to himself, I'm king of the world. He's not really saying that. That was what James Cameron said when he won Titanic. Can you believe the ego? The ego of the man. I think Ken Loach is just happy to be winning there and well-deserving. They use that, um, the fact that he won that award in the advertising film so winning awards will help promote the movie and also you've got to think how is palm door signified something different to an oscar if you win an oscar that says something but if you win a palm door it says something different it, as i say it's a more kind of alternative more artistic award after all black panther won an oscar black panther won an oscar it won an oscar for best special effects lol Really, if you've seen the last third of that film, you'll realise it. Uh, you know the special effects kind of look like a PlayStation Two game. I could probably do something better on my phone. I don't know why they thought it won. Well, I know why it won the best special effects award. It needed to win something. We'll discuss that later when we talk about Black Panther. So Eon used some guerrilla, guerrilla marketing techniques. That's guerrilla spelt like that. Take a take a note of the spelling. It's not guerrilla like Donkey Kong. It's not, it's not an ape, it's a, a form of marketing, guerrilla marketing, or guerrilla filmmaking, you could sometimes say. It's a sort of punk way of doing it. It's on, on the streets, low budget, sometimes a little bit controversial. It might be a little bit illegal sometimes. So an example of that might be the projections I talked about. Uh, they projected quotes onto famous buildings. You can see some examples of that here. Um, that caused a lot of discourse. Lots of people took pictures of it, as you can see in the last picture there. They tweeted the pictures under the hashtag, uh, hashtag, we are all Daniel Blake. So that caused some, um, 
it's interesting. It's interesting as well because it's you. You know, you're allowed to project things onto buildings. It looks like graffiti, but it's it's a projection. So obviously, you can turn it off. And you're not causing any damage. Um, Eon advertised for five regional marketing officers. They focused in these northern cities. You can see that I've listed there. Um, the work was contracted for twenty days, and they were paid uh, two and a half grand. And what they had to do for that was they had to visit different locations like hospitals, police stations, um, schools, council buildings, lots of areas that sort of um, public service people work in and maybe left left leaning people might be working in. And they sort of talked about the film, they, they promoted the film, they handed out flyers, they posted up flyers, which is actually can be illegal in some places. And outside the cinemas where they were showing it, they stood with campaign signs saying, vote the Tories out and stuff like that. So they kind of gave the illusion of a, um, a protest outside the cinema. Again, it's like building awareness and it's building kind of um, discourse, creating a story, interesting stuff. Think Curran and Seaton, think how Curran and Seaton challenge. No, sorry, think how this film challenges Curran and Seaton's theory. Curran and Seaton said the majority of the media was created from a position of power and profit. That's all they care about. Well, I don't think that's true of this film, is it? I don't think it's true of what they aim to do. They didn't make a film to try and make the biggest profit possible. Um, I said that there was a hashtag, we are all Daniel Blake. Um, there was also a viral campaign. If you go to the YouTube channel, we are all Daniel Blake, you can see all of this. Um, there's a speech at the end of the film and different people were said reciting the speech and it's sort of edited together. So we all, you know, lots of different people are saying the speech, thus sort of proving the point that we're all in this together and it could happen to anyone. And it was, um, it was mostly sort of, you know, the public, but there was also a couple of celebrities in there saying lines from the speech, and I suppose notably Jeremy Corbyn. I think you should check it out on the YouTube channel. So check out the We Are All Daniel Blake YouTube channel. It also shows you a video of people reacting to the promotion, the, the projected promotional material uh, in the street. So it's got like their reactions films, kind of interesting. Check it out. The premiere is a good way to uh, promote a film. And the premiere for I, Daniel Blake was quite different to normal premieres, so most English premieres will happen in London. This happened in Newcastle, where the film's set. Um, and look, these are pictures from the premiere. They don't look like a premiere, do they? There's people holding placards and protest signs. There's um, Ken Loach there with old Jeremy Corbyn, looking very dapper, looking very good. And you've got the actors on the right there holding placards themselves. I don't think you'd see Tom Cruise at um, a premiere for... Mission Impossible, holding up a sign saying one in four low-income mothers skip meals to feed their children. Um, not not quite his style. So, But again, this is a very different film and it's trying to spread a message. I think it's important that um, Jeremy Corbyn went, he went and saw the film on the uh, premiere and he came out and he wrote an article for The Mirror about it, which was quite good. Um, he also brought it up in the House of Commons and here's a picture of him doing that. Look at that. Look at her face. He's saying to her, you want to watch that I, Daniel Blake, you might learn something. And she's going, I do not want to watch that. Or something, I mean, I, I imagine. But yeah, he brought it up in the House of Commons and it was a story, a big story in the paper. Technology. So we're on to the technology section now. Um, so they, they, were the, they were the marketing areas. The premiere you can talk about, the projections you can talk about, the newspaper articles you can talk about. The other thing you might want to research is um, some newspapers, I think the Mirror, Possibly The Guardian gave away free tickets. So promoting the film, not worried about selling, you know, selling tickets, more worried about people seeing it. Thought it was more important for people to see it. Anyway, let's move on to this technology bit. What technology was important with this film? I'm just going to get a throat sweet. You know how I do it. You know how I do it. I like them throat sweets. I'm just going to get one now. Here we go. Here we go. Brings you back to the classroom, doesn't it? Me eating these Jackman sweets. There we go. All right. So what technology was used in the production of this film? Not very much. Um, digital cameras, such as the way these days digital cameras are used. Um, in di distribution of the film, um, the advertising, a little bit of marketing, viral marketing, a little bit we talked about, not a huge amount, uh, the viral marketing that we talked about. Obviously reviews of the film would be put on um, internet sites as well. Anything in the paper would appear on the paper's website. We've talked about that. Um, the main thing you can talk about with technology is how it was exhibited. So it wasn't shown in the cinema very much. So digital downloads, streaming services, iPlayer, they were important ways for the film to get out there. 
Um, so that's mainly how technology helped with that. Regulation, Livingstone and Lunt, those those classic, that chestnut. Um, so just to go through a little bit about regulation, it's not it's kind of interesting, I guess, here. Um, it was rated a 15 certificate by the BBFC. The BBFC is the British Board of Film Classification, originally called the British Board of Film Censorship, but they changed that. I think it sounded a bit too officious. Um, the, it got a 15 because of the language, I think, and the subject matter. It's got a couple of swears in there, and it's a pretty hard subject matter. I mean, the, the storyline for the girl is very sad in places. Uh, but do you think it could have been lower than a 15? Do you think it deserved to be lower? Maybe it should have been lower because maybe it needed to be seen by more people. Maybe it's um, it should have been shown in schools. What do you think? Um, you c you know, for educational purpose, you can lower, you know, the certificate could be lower. Also, producers will want a low certificate. Why is this? Well, I'll tell you. It's uh, You know, you know. It's to get as many people in as possible. So, um, you know the lower the certificate, the more potential for people to see the film, which is good. So things to do this week. Things to do this week. Watch I Don't Blake if you haven't already done so. Please watch it and make notes on the themes, locations, production style, ideologies, anything that stands out to you. You need a cohesive, full knowledge of this. So seeing the film obviously is going to help. Everything should link together. You should see ideologies in the film that reflect the ideologies of the filmmaker, that reflect the ideologies of the BBC and the public service channel, um, and the remit from the licence. You should see um, that reflecting the way it was advertised and how it targeted a specific target audience. Really, all these sort of things should start tying them together a bit. So please watch the film, it's really good. Um, it's, it's on eBay for about three quid, so if you can't find it anywhere else, buy it. It might have some, um, the DVD might have some uh, extra features, interviews and stuff that might be helpful. And you might, you know, you might want to watch it again and lend it to people, get the message out there, people. Next one, next thing to do is um, research about the marketing campaigns that we've just discussed. So I've talked you through a few of them. Um, it would be very good if you could research those yourself. If you want to go back and watch again and make notes on the ones I mentioned about, that's good, but you know, you should Google them, you should search them, um, you know, read the articles about the, how successful the campaigns were. Um, the devil is in the details when it comes to this exam, as you know. So please do that. Um, that is it for I Don't Know Blake. Um, we're going to do a little bit on Black Panther over the next two weeks, and then we need to write an essay on an exam question on these two films. But we have studied all the salient points. Um, so, you know, go back over this. There are notes on eBrock that you could read as well. Um, but we have covered everything. And um, I will be setting you a essay question on this in a couple of weeks' time once we've done Black Panther. And I'll give you an essay guide, as I always do, to help you through it. So that just leaves um, me to say... Oh, one other thing I want to say is... Um, I don't know if you remember me showing you... Uh, Charlie Brooker in class. I showed you a couple of clips from Screen Wipe and Games Wipe. We watched that Games video. I really like Charlie Brooker and he made those Screen Wipe programmes about 10 years ago on the BBC and he left to do Black Mirror, which I think is a mixed bag, if we're honest. Some episodes are good, some episodes are bad. It's not... No, they're not bad, but they're not great. Anyway, anyway, because of the coronavirus, BBC has tempted him back to the BBC and he's made a special, one-off special called Viral Wipe that was on telly last night. It's about the media's coverage of the coronavirus. Guys, you should watch it, it's brilliant, it's really good. And as media students, you know, you might find it interesting. I'd love to hear what you think of it, so give it a watch, maybe send me an email, I'd like to see if you think it's funny or, or in, you know, I think it's good, kind of insightful. Yeah, give it a watch, see what you think. And then, it just leaves me to say, dog time. As, as promised, as a reward for seeing it all the way through to the end of this, you get to see a few pictures of my little dog. So here he is. Frankenstein. Oh, look at that little fella. Look at that little face. And now, I noticed there that I'm wearing a Nirvana t-shirt and it looks like there's some nasty stains on it. Um, that's not sweat. That is just age. That t-shirt was bought in 1994 when I went to see Nirvana. Can you believe that? That t-shirt's older than you guys. But anyway, enough of the fashion tips. Look at that little dog. Lovely guy. What a fella. And one more, just for luck. There he is. Look at the crazy face. Lovely. Lovely. Anyway, that's enough from me and Frankenstein for this week. Uh, just leaves me to say, have a good week. 
Hope that helped you. Any problems, you can email me. I'm happy to email back or phone you if you need it. Um, I'm going to go through the exam results with you next week, give you some feedback. Don't worry, everything's improvable. Um, we can build on anything at all. If you didn't finish the exam, you left any questions off, you might need to go back and finish it. But that ain't no thing, you just need to finish it. Um, but, we, you know, certainly don't worry about your grades. We can build on that. And it was, um, you know, it's a it's funny circumstance, isn't it? I don't imagine it was easy doing it at home. Not very easy to focus. So don't worry, we'll get you through it. And we'll build on it next year. So anyway, hope that's good. Um, hope that helped you in some way. It, you know, this was the third attempt. My third attempt, I, I recorded this three times all the way through. And it never, it never saved. So I've done it with quick time. Hope this works. Um, goodbye. Take care. Drop me an email if you want. And I hope you enjoy Viral Wipe. It's quite fun. Bye-bye.